Praise the Lord, saints. So good to be with you once again. And based upon some of the comments that I'm getting here on YouTube, I, I just want to channel, I just want to say thank you. And I, I really do believe that we're going to wrap this week up with a good word, a word from the Lord. And I believe that God is going to bless somebody. I believe God is going to bless you today. This is truly your day to be blessed. And I just come to say, my God, my God, what a mighty God we serve. You know, today, I, I, I want to talk to you today about change. I want to talk about change. And change is something that is inevitable. You can't stop change. Change is taking place every day in our lives. Something is changing. We are changing. Life is changing. I mean, the experience of change is good. But, the, but change can also be bad based upon the information that we might be running on or living by. So my theme for today is change is good. Change is good. And understand now, change starts with you. If there any, any change going to take place in your life, it's going to start with you. And for positive change to take place in your life, it has to start not just with you, but in you. And, you know, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by this word of God. Are you hearing me? Be not conformed to this word, this world, but be ye transformed by that word of God, that word of God is able to change your mind. And when you can change your mind, you can change the direction in the course of your life. And you can find yourself at a good place, a better place, if you can commit to the process of change. You have to be committed to change. If anything is really going to take place, you're going to have to be committed. That means intentional. That means on purpose. I'm going to do what I need to do to bring about the positive change that I want to see, the positive change that I want to take place in my life. Matter of fact, you have no idea what you can do. You really don't have no idea of what you can really be doing with your life now. Mm -mm -mm. Mainly because you have no idea of what is truly in you. <laughs> Man, I mean, you have so, you have some gifts, some talents, you have some stuff in you, you haven't even tapped into yet. You're so busy looking outside of yourself for that break. You're so busy looking outside of yourself for that, for that opportunity, that chance, that something, when that something that you are looking for might be laying, lying right within you. And we have to be able to wake up to that. We have to be able to come to that. And as I said, you have to commit to the process of change. Why? Because change is good. Change is good. And when you know change is good, let me, let me, let me get this now. And because you know change is good, you're going to do what you can do to keep changing. Are you hearing me? Not changing for the worse, but changing for the better. Why? Because you recognize and realize that in regards of what you might be going through, all things are working together for the good for those of us who love God and have been called by him. My sister, my brother, you have been called by God. Oh, Jesus. You have been called by God. Let's go to scripture, Philippians 3 and 13. My brothers and sisters, I count at myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. How many things are you involved in today? How many things are you so caught up in that you really can't, let's just say, get yourself anchored to that one thing, that one thing that God has called you to do? That one thing, that seed that God has planted in you for you to go to the next level, for you to answer that high call that is on your life. Forgetting those things which are behind. Mm -mm. 
Some of you are still recycling your past, the hurt, the pain, the shame, still, you know, in that place of defeat. And God is saying, you are more than a conqueror. Man, if you only knew, if you only knew, if you only knew, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but look at what the look at what Paul says, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, those things which are ahead of you, those things that are in your future. I'm here to tell you, you have a great future, but change ooh, is a process that all of us must be open to. All of us must be, let's just say, excited about. I'm excited about the change or the changes that I see taking place in my life. Can you say the same? Can you say the same today about, man, I'm excited about the changes that I see taking place in my life. And look at what Paul says in the 14th verse. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Man, man, there's a prize. There's a reward if you can press, if you're willing to press. As I said, this you have to live this life on purpose intentional. I want to see change. I got to see change. I know there's something more to me. You have to be able to speak to yourself. I know there's something more to me than what I'm living right now, than what I'm seeing right now. I know I can do more. Why? Because I believe God for more. Whew. All good change will start with self-discipline. Self-discipline. You're going to have to be committed to this fully. Are you hearing me? You're going to have to be able to discipline yourself. Like in the morning, you know, what do you do? You get up in the morning, you turn on television, listening to the same old news that's playing back when really you need to meditate, you need to pray, you need to get a plan of action for the day as you start this day. You know, what do you want to accomplish today that will bring you closer to, to that dream, bring you closer to that thing that you're inspire, aspiring to do or to make happen. What what are, what are you gonna, what are you, you know, putting down on paper? Write the vision and make it plain. Man, self-discipline. See, because we can develop some habits that are not good. We can develop a lifestyle that is not good. We can walk around in some beliefs that are not good. That's why this word of God is so important. That's why this word of God can make a real big difference in your life. Why? Because greatness is in you. Oh, man, I'm going to say it again. Greatness is in you. Don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Change is good. Greatness is in you. Man. See, and you might be in the dark today. Then you might not be working out the way you wanted to work out. You might be going through a quiet storm or whatever. But the real deal is, mm, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to play or, or play that game with the devil. You don't have to sit on that rock when, man, God's got something better for you. Are you hearing me? Now, if you're going to sit on a rock, make sure you're sitting on that rock called Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to sit in those in in, 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 in in no despair. I don't want to sink in worry. I don't want to sink in fear. I don't want to sink in hurt, shame, all that other stuff that is designed to bring a good man, good woman down. My brother, my sister, you got to take up the wings of an eagle. You can run and not get weary. You can walk in that thing. My God, my God, don't you know who you are? Don't you know who you are? Greatness is in you. You know, you, you look at those beautiful flowers that you see in the flower shop. You know, I I was going past the flower shop. matter of fact, I, I went to Costco's uh, just the other day, and they have a section where the flowers are just, just looking beautiful. Costco got some nice flowers. Matter of fact, a lot of these places out there got some nice flowers. But you understand that, you know, before these flowers became beautiful and you was able to see the the beauty that is in the flower all those flowers started in the dark under the ground in the dark in the soil of life and one day 
that flower after being watered and getting the, the, the nutrients and nourishment that it was able to get from the soil, that flower eventually broke through the soil and it began to reveal its beauty, show its beauty, showing you that it was alive. Lord Jesus, you too have to be planted in that soil. Mm -hmm. See, and, and I'm here to tell you now, you have to be able to identify also those cycles in your life that God wants you to turn from. <laughs> the road hasn't been easy for some of you. The road has been difficult, but in spite of the difficulty, you was able to break through some stuff. You was able to rise and shine and to give God some glory. Thank you, Jesus. Because I recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord, think about it now. Can you imagine where you would be if God wasn't on your side? Or should I say, if you wasn't on the winning team, if you wasn't on God's side? Imagine mm, mm -mm, if he was to take his hand off you. And this is why God is saying we have to be able to turn from those cycles of dysfunction, turn from those cycles that is, uh, let's just say, that will keep us going around that mountain. God don't want you going around that mountain. It's time to climb. And understand now, sometime now climbing that mountain now, you're going to get tired. You're going to get a little weary. But what do the Bible say? Don't get weary in well-doing. Mm. Mm -mm. See, because there's a reward, my God, my God, when you get to the other side, when you get to the top, Lord Jesus, there's a reward. That Mount of Transfiguration, man, oh man, oh man. Woo, Moses, mm -mm -mm. he can tell you about it. Oh, yeah. See, and, and, and there's some men and women in the Bible who know what it is to struggle but to hold on to God, hold on to Jesus, to keep on pressing for the blessing. Why? Because they know that their Redeemer lives in them. I want you to know that God is alive and well in you. He's in you, my brother. He's in you, my sister. And he wants you to know that change is good. See, I understand now, there there's real benefits there's real benefits coming from, uh, let's just say, uh, uh, lasting change. Lasting change. When lasting change can take place in your life, you're going to reap the benefits of it, Lord Jesus. See, because when you don't expose yourself to the possibilities of change, what, what do you do? You place a limitation upon yourself. I mean, you've been held back long enough. You've gone through so much stuff. And as I said, some of you are still going through, but in spite of what you're going through, you're not laying down in it. You're going to keep getting up. In spite of how many times I get knocked down, I'm going to get back up. And that's what God wants to see in you. A, a man, a woman who is willing to fight a good fight of faith. Change is good. Change is good. And change is worth fighting for. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Why ask God to widen your coast if you're not willing to go through the doors that he has already opened for you? There's some doors already open. Listen to me now. There's some doors that God has opened that can take you to a place <laughs> that you haven't even dreamed about yet. You haven't even thought about yet. I'm here to tell you, God want to do a new thing in you. Can you not see it? Can you not perceive it? We talk about how good God is. We talk about how, how great God is. We talk about how awesome God is. But yet and still, we limit him in our prayers. We limit him in our beliefs. We limit him in our walk. We limit him in our talk. My brother, my sister, you have to be able to speak those things that are not as if they are and believe that you will receive them and you can have them. Are you hearing me today?
God so love you, man. Oh man, oh man. You know, whew, I can tell you, and I, I truly mean it from my heart. And many of you, I don't know, never seen a day in my life, never seen you. You could walk right past me today, and I wouldn't even know that you're someone that come to this line, come to this channel. But I'm here to tell you today, God loves you. I love you too. See, and that's the beautiful thing about this. Why? Because God is teaching each and every one of us how to commit to the process of change. See, 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 you have to commit to change. Why? Because you're upgrading, you know, you're upgrading yourself. I mean, look at what they're doing with technology today. I mean, man, I mean, years ago, I used to walk around with a with a with a landline. You know, we used to be tied to the landline. We used to be tied to a pager. Anybody know what I'm talking about when I talk about a pager? You know what I'm saying? But but today we got the telephone. I mean, I don't have to go to the bank. I can I can get the bank on my telephone. I can find out what's in my account on, on the telephone. I can do a lot of stuff on the telephone. I can connect to my doctor on the telephone. I can I can I can uh, uh, get a GPS off my telephone. In other words, I'm going someplace, I'm riding my bike, I'm on my car, and I'm I get lost. I can't get lost today. Why? Because I, my telephone got GPS. I got GPS in my telephone. I know just where I'm at 24-7. I mean, long as I'm awake, not when I'm asleep now. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, the technology has changed, has changed so much. And we too, you too, have to be able to change. We can't live in the Stone Age. We can't go back to that 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 time uh, where 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 folk was riding state coaches and and tying their horses to a a, a, a post and so on and so forth. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So we we recognize and realize that you know life is about change. And when you look at what is what is taking place in the fields of medicine, what is taking place in the fields of science, what is taking place in astrology, and I'm not talking about astrology that way. I'm talking about aeronautical stuff. I'm talking about NASA going to the moon. I'm talking about you know all of these different things that are taking place in space and you know out there and you know above the planet and even the things that's taking place even beneath the planet in the oceans so on and so forth i mean there's still a whole lot of unplotted or uncharted i should say land or, or or areas on this planet that we haven't even begun to see or discover we're discovering things every day man so when you look at the cycles of dysfunction and to be, you know, so tied to those cycles and not allowing yourself to move or to get into that groove where you can turn and change and move in a direction that will bring you more. And let me say this now. You have to also stop beating up on yourself. You got to stop putting yourself down. Man, you better than that. Don't you know you better than what you might be saying about yourself? I don't know who God is speaking to right now, but if but if you if you're hearing this and and you're at that place where you know you keep saying things to yourself about yourself that is not good, stop it now. Stop it now. You better than that. My brother, my sister, you are amazing. Man, yeah, you might be wearing some scars, you might be a little handicapped. You might be, you know, you you know that 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 last choice you made may have set you back a little bit. But look here, get up, get yourself up, shake yourself off, and get to moving. Get stepping, get to stepping, moving forward into your purpose, into your destiny. Understand, God's got a plan and a purpose for your life, and it's going to take you being willing to step into that change. Why? Because the process of change is good. Mm, mm, mm. See, go look here. When you're willing to break through those doors of your past, because that's what uh, you know. Some of us we're still dealing with those issues of the past. He left me. I don't know why he left me. 
Oh boy, I love that girl. And I mean, I gave her all of what I had and and for some reason she just not loving me back and so on and so forth. And I mean, hey, people, people come, people go, but that don't mean you, you know, you 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 break out of life. That don't mean you give up on life. You got to be able to pick yourself up, turn yourself around, have a little walk, have a little talk with Jesus. I'm here to tell you now. Whereas people are not always faithful, or don't always keep their promises, so on and so forth. I'm here to tell you that there's a God who is so in love with you, who's forever faithful. He is forever faithful. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm here to tell you right now, he is so close to you right now. He is so close to you right now. Remember when John laid his head on the chest of, of Jesus? Can you imagine what that moment must have been like? When he laid his head on the chest of Jesus, he was able to feel the heartbeat of Jesus. He was able to hear the heartbeat of Jesus. Matter of fact, while his head was there, can you imagine Jesus breathing on the nap of his neck? The, the, the breath of Jesus. He's receiving the breath of Jesus that's on the nap of his neck. I mean, that brother must have been feeling real good. I mean, I can feel the heartbeat of my Savior. Oh, I can hear. Oh, I hear that little heartbeat. And ooh, just like a mother, when the doctor put the stethoscope on, the, on her belly when she's pregnant and she can hear the heartbeat of that child. Well, I mean, I mean, John must have been so excited. And then, like I said to him, to feel the breath of Jesus on the nap of his neck. Lord Jesus. Man, we are truly missing out on life. That's why it's all about, you know. Mm, I remember I asked the Lord, I said to the Lord one New Year's uh, watch night service, I said, Lord, all I want is a closer walk with you. Whew, a closer walk with you. And it was some seven years later that God allowed me to start a church called Closer Walk Ministries. I didn't even realize that what I asked God for, I don't want no money, I didn't need no honey, I didn't need this, I didn't need that. All I want, what I was going through back then, I had made some poor, bad choices that have impacted my life. And Lord, I want to thank God for picking me up, turning me around. And I thank God that I wasn't the, the man that I was when I first got to the church. And man, there was no turning back. I'm not going to say I'm perfect now. I made some mistakes along the way, but I wasn't making the same mistakes. I wasn't falling to the same tricks and schemes of the devil. Mm, mm -mm. It was like what that scripture say, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. I had to endure my cross, my brother, my sister, you're gonna to have to endure your cross, but with your cross is gonna come some change. And as I said, change is good. You're gonna to have to be able to accept the unacceptable. You're going to have to be able to believe God mm, and take him at his word. And you're going to have to also believe yourself, believe in yourself. You can do this. All the mistakes, all of the setbacks, all of the doubts, all of the worries, all of the fears, you have to be willing to, to pull down, break through those doors of the feet. Are you hearing me? See, see, there's some stuff you can't fix. There's some stuff you're dealing with that you can't fix. You've been trying, and instead of it getting better, it's getting worse. You can't fix. So let me tell you what to do. Let it go. You can't fix it. Let it go. Give it to, matter of fact, Jesus says, cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. Let it go so you can move forward with your life. Why allow yourself to stay stuck? Mm, at a place where nothing's changing, where nothing's happening. God want to do a new thing. And he wants you to see that the best is yet to come if you're willing to let go of that hurtful, painful, shameful past. 
And what you need to do now is learn the art of spiritual warfare. You have to learn the art of spiritual warfare. You know, you mothers, man. I mean, some of you mothers can cook real good. It didn't happen overnight. You, I mean, to learn how to season that food and to do what you do, how long to keep the keep it in the oven, keep it on the stove, keep it in that pot. You know, the guy to stir it up every night. I mean, that was an art. That's an, there's an art to cooking. There's an art to doing the many things that you might find yourself doing. But I'm here to tell you, warfare, Lord Jesus, all of us have to learn the art of spiritual warfare. And let me say this now, be before you leave your home, you don't leave your home undressed. What do you do? You get dressed. And whatever you feel is appropriate for you to wear that day going out the house, that's what you're going to put on. Are you hearing me? And let me say this now, because I want to take it just a little bit deeper. That's the physical. That's the outer. See, now you have to also start your day by putting on the whole armor of God. That's it. You got to put on the whole armor of God. I mean, from the, the helmet of salvation, sarge your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and then every other uh, 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 part in between, you have to be able to cover yourself whew, in a suit of armor. I'm talking about that spiritual armor now. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because God want to do a new thing in you. And then look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mighty through God, not in and of yourself. See, and this is why we do what we do. This is what why we submit to the process of change why because change is good and i realize i have to be willing to fight for that which is good that which is better that which will bless my god my god you're not just here to bless yourself you can bless your family you can bless your ministry you can bless your neighbor your 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 your, your neighbor's kids your your your, your neighborhood i mean hey, so many can reap the benefits of you being willing to enter into that process of change. Some of you have some amazing ministries. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and, and I feel, I feel for those of you who have made a choice in a decision to, to, to sit on the sidelines, to be a spectator and not a participant. See, if you're a participant, you're going to commit to the process of change because you know change is good. Change, oh Lord, you know, there's a saying, practice makes you perfect. Uh-uh. Practice doesn't make you perfect. Practice makes you better. And you just keep on practicing each and every day. What you need to practice, that's going to make you better, better. I'm better today than I was yesterday. And I'm going to be better tomorrow than I am today. But I will never be perfect until I get that new body, until I get home with Jesus, until you get home with Jesus. Are you hearing me? And look at what, look at what, look at what, look at what uh, uh, Paul went on to say. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imagination. In every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, in bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought. See, in other words, you got to pay attention to what you're thinking about. You have to think about what you're thinking about. So many of us, you know, we can be uptight going through, find ourselves at a bad place, or a place of indecision and so on and so forth, mainly because we don't take time to think about what we're thinking about. We still caught up with trying to do this, caught up with trying to do that, trying to please him, trying to please her. But yet and still, we don't take time out to try to please ourselves. We don't take time out. To, to, to sit back and just to, to meditate and to think about those things that are good, those things that, are, that will bring a good report. Are you hearing me? You have to be able to sow even to yourself and into yourself. 
how can you give away something you don't have for yourself? How can you love somebody when you don't even know how to love yourself, much less love God? Because when you learn how to love God, he's going to teach you how to love yourself. And he's going to teach you how to love and how to treat others. And all of that takes place in that process of change. All of that takes place in that process of change. See, see, you also have to learn how to spot or see the cause of your pending and future problems. Are you hearing me? You have to be able to spot or see the cause of your pending and future problems. Then you have to learn how to get through the traffic of dysfunction. That traffic of dysfunction, man, oh man, oh man. I mean, it's really amazing, isn't it? I mean, how we can get stuck in that dysfunction where we just seem to keep going through that same revolving door, never coming out on the other side, always dealing with the same old stuff time and time again, the same old people, haven't met nobody new lately, mainly because my attitude is not what it should be or could be. You know, you have a good attitude, man. People begin to gravitate towards you because, man, because there's so many people out here in the world today that are so sad, always complaining, always talking down, you know, talking about, you know, what's going, uh, you know, what, what what is not working instead of talking about what is working. We have to come, you know, when you get up in the morning, when I get up in the morning, I get up with an attitude of gratitude. You be grateful, be thankful unto him and bless his name. That's what's wrong with so many of us today. We're not grateful. We're not grateful. We don't know what it is to be thankful. Lord, I'm thankful. And when you can swing your bed out, when you can swing your feet, excuse me, when you can swing your feet out of your bed and put your feet on the floor and then stand up un under your own strength, man. You have a reason to say, thank you, Jesus. That right there. You go to any hospital in any city. And you see some people tied to the bed. Not tied. They can't get up out of the bed. They don't have the strength in their legs to do what they need to do. Might, might be laying in the bed with tubes and, you know, in the noses and got, you know, IVs in their arms and so on and so forth. And I... I mean, you have so much to be thankful for. And then we're doing so little with the much that we have. Uh, whew, doing so, so little with the much that you have. God has blessed you to get up today. But you get up and some have gotten up. And what are they doing? Complaining about what they don't have. Well, let me tell you something. You've never seen a U-Haul going behind a hearse. All this stuff we trying to hold on to, all, all this stuff we trying to capture, trying to get. Well, guess what? You take none of it with you when you go on to meet your master, go on to meet your savior. When you go from this life to the next, understand you take nothing with you. I mean, Job said it. He said, I, I came into this world with nothing and the sure thing I'm going to leave here with nothing. Even your children don't belong to you you parents, that nice car you have in your driveway, that nice home you live in, somebody else gonna get it. And look at how many nights we kept ourselves up trying to figure out how we gonna pay the mortgage, pay the rent, how we gonna put gas in the car, how we gonna fix the car, how we gonna do this, how I'm gonna get that food on the table. There's so much going on, but you don't have to be stuck at a bad place. You don't have to be stuck at a bad place. You have to be able to, to understand that when you're stuck, you're really not going no place. And that's why you just can't allow yourself to get stuck on that stinking thinking. You gotta let go of the stinking thinking. You gotta let go of the doubt. You gotta let go of the worry. You gotta let go. Matter of fact, you got to move away from the naysayers, those who can't see the vision, those that can't see the dream, those that don't want more than, you know, what they might have even today. Are you making your today count? Will you make 
today count. You can only do it when you're willing to step into the process of change. You can never become what you don't believe about yourself. But you can become what you do believe about yourself. If I believe I'm no good, guess what? I work towards being no good. But if I can believe I can do all things through Christ, then I'm going to work towards doing those things ooh, that God says I can do. I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I can be. I can, are you hearing me? Matter of fact, I said, I, you can do what God says you can do. You can be what God says you can be. Oh, you will become what God has purposed for you to become. You got to believe it in your spirit. You got to carry that thing in your spirit. Oh, yes. Why? Because you are not an accident. And God has called you and he has placed purpose in your life. Are you hearing me? I'm here to tell you now, your life has meaning. You are that one that can make a difference. Phew, Lord Jesus. You are that one that can make a difference. Go ahead, Thomas. Lord Jesus. Oh, Brandy, you making a difference. Lord Jesus. Oh man, man, oh man, oh man. Sometimes we need to we need to dance to that happy song. Thank you, Jesus. Making a difference. Are you hearing me? Oh yes, oh yes, Tamika. My God, my God. Ooh, Lord Jesus. See, you have to be able to see that God is calling you. God is calling you, Sharon. God is calling you, my brother. God is calling you, my sister. All things are working together for the good. Go ahead, Beverly. God's got you. Man, he who has begun a good work in you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man, oh, man, you ministers on the line. There's a word in you that God wants you to get out. My God, that evangelist in you, God want to send you places where you've never been. Oh, yes, the road is tough, but I'm here to tell you, you are tougher than the problem. You are tougher than the test, and God's going to definitely get you to that place where you're going to be able to soar like an eagle. You're going to be able to run and not get weary. Walk in that thing. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Saints, do your best to identify those problems. You know, because I understand and I realize when I look back over my life, many of those problems that I had to subject myself to is those problems that I brought upon myself. Problems that I have brought upon myself. You just might be the cause of your problem. To thine own self, be true. See, you have to be able to see this thing you have to be able to see this thing for what it is now. To thine own self, be true. I'm thanking God for Jesus because I recognize and realize that all things are truly working together for the good. And what can I tell you? Change is good. Change is good. Accept that which is good. You don't have to accept what's not good. Accept what is good. And I'm here to tell you, God is good. Oh, Lord Jesus, keep pressing for the blessing. See, and when you understand that change is good, see, 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 you, you don't want to miss the mark. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Change is good. And because change is good, I'm going to keep on pressing for the blessing. So whatever it is you're dealing with, my sister, Whatever it is you're dealing with, my brother, that got you stuck on this highway called life, I'm here to tell you, oh, my God, keep looking unto Jesus. See, you have to get your mind ready to expect more. Man, oh, man, oh, man. And I'm not talking about more of the problem. I'm talking about expect more of the good. I'm talking about, hey, like I said earlier, we talk about how good God is. We talk about how amazing God is. We talk about God is able to do anything but fail. And I'm here to tell you that if he's in you, working on the inside, oh, what a change in your life. Don't abort the promise or abandon the dream. Don't abort the promise or abandon the dream. It is not too late. Are you hearing me? It is not too late. And change is good. 
It is not too late. You have to believe God for more. Believe more. When you can believe God for more, guess what? You can see more. Lord Jesus. See, and, and let me say this, because I think this is so very important. If God is allowing you, and I'm speaking to those of you who might find yourself at a difficult place right now. If God is allowing you to go through a trial or a test, it's only because he is, he is doing something that's going to make your life better. He's going to use that problem, that trial, that test to build you up, not break you down. See, the devil will bring that trial, that test to break you down, to, sit you, to get you to sit on the sidelines, to get you to turn away. Are you hearing me? To get you to lose focus to get you to let go of what God has put in your hands. I'm here to tell you, oh, God want to do something better for you if you're willing to fight, fight through what you're going through. God has purpose in a plan that is greater than what you can see right now. You have to be able to keep looking beyond the problem, the circumstances, the trials, and the tests that you might be in right now. Remember, Paul? Paul says that his goal is to know was to know Christ. He wanted to know Christ. Not only know Christ, he wanted to be like him. Lord Jesus. See, 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 I love Abraham, I, uh, Isaac, and Jacob. I, I love Peter, James, and John. I love Paul. You know, love Rahab, love uh, Ruth, Naomi. I, I mean, I love Solomon, love David. Love Timothy. But it's something about being like Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Whew. I'm talking about that man who's often imitated but never duplicated. He is God all by himself. Whoo, Lord Jesus. I'm talking about the one that stood out on nothing at the corner of no place and made the world twirl. The one that thought enough of you to include you in the scheme of things, uh, to call you forth at this time and place a high calling on your life. Ooh, don't take your eyes off the prize. Don't take your eyes off the vision or the dream. No, man, that God has called you for such a time as this. You have to be laser focused. Laser focused and fully committed. In other words, intentional. I'm going to do this on purpose. I got to do this on purpose. That's my assignment, to do this on purpose. See, and many of us have gone through some tough stuff. Men, and some of you are still going through some tough stuff right now. But guess what? That, that, that great God that's on the inside, you're, he's not going to let you sit down. He's not going to let you lay down. He's not going to let you give up. He's not going to let you give in. Why? Because there's some fight in you. There's something on the inside of, of you telling you you can do all things through Christ who's in your life. And I know that all things are working together for the good. And I got a feeling. Matter of fact, this is more than a feeling. I have reckoned. I know that all things are working together for the good. And I know that seasons come and seasons go. And I'm in a process right now, that process of change. And I'm talking about change for the better. I'm not going back. Uh-uh. I'm not going, I'm not going to rest until I get to that place where I know God want me to be. Why? Because I know greatness is in me. I'm going to say it again. Greatness is in you, my sister. Greatness is in you, my brother. Mm -mm -mm. Saints, you can't afford to let anything or anybody get in the way of what you know and believe God wants you to do. You can't let nothing get in the way now. Are you hearing me? See, see, and I'm, and like I said, there's going to be some naysayers. Matter of fact, there's going to be some time wasters going to come and, and, and try to get you to, to waste some time with them. You have to know that you know that you know that this is your season. This is your season. This is the time in your life where you have to step into change. You have to step into the process of change. Why? Because change is good. I'm living to do God's will. 
And I realized doing God's will is not going to always be easy, but the rewards will far outweigh whatever, whatever, my sister, whatever, my brother, you might find yourself going through right now. The reward that God will bless you with will far outweigh anything and everything you might find yourself going through today. And I don't care what it is. And I'm not here to downplay the hurt, the pain, the problem, the sickness, whatever, the divorce, the separation, the this or that, the loss of job, the loss of car, loss of this. I mean, hey, hold to his hands. God's unchanging hands. I'm here to tell you, God can do it. God can pick you up, turn you around. See, as a matter of fact, James even says it himself. He says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all joy. So I got to be able to see the upside of the down stuff that I might find myself going through. Why? Because all things are working together for the good. I'm not going to rebel against God. Don't rebel against God because God's not fixing your situation or doing what you might want him to do as fast as you might want him to do it. Don't rebel against God. And then don't faint in your problem, in your circumstance, in that situation that has, you know, come to try you. Don't faint in your problem. Don't give up while going through your trial, going through your test. So what did I say? Don't rebel. Don't faint. And don't give up. Lord, gee. and if you don't give up, that means you're not going to give in. The Lord will give you the strength that you need to overcome every problem in every situation, every trial, every test you might find yourself going through today. Man, man, your problem is not your enemy. Let me, let me, let me wake you up to something. Your problem is not your enemy because God will use your problem to shape and develop you into the man, the woman that he wants you to be. Lord Jesus. That's why we can say all things are working together for the good. For those of us who love God and are called according to his purpose, God is trying to produce a Christ likeness in you. Lord Jesus, he's trying to produce a Christ likeness in you. But this is why the word says we have to hide the word of God in our hearts. Hide that word in your heart. You have to become a Berean. Study to show yourself approved. A workman not ashamed. Rightly divide that word of truth. Thank you, Jesus. If this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. Aren't you, aren't you glad? Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. Aren't you glad he picked you up, turned you around? You might not be where you want to be, but thank God you're not where you used to be. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I, I just, I, I'm ministering to myself right now. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what this is about. How the, a Christ-likeness. God wants you to produce a Christ-likeness. See, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, he will produce, help produce a Christ-likeness in you. The process will involve suffering. You're going to suffer now. It's not going to be easy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be without some pain and some suffering. And Lord knows you're going to be frustrated. All of us are going to deal with some hardships in life. See, but the fruit of the Spirit cannot be produced if you don't go through a storm or some uninvited trouble, problem, care, worry. you got to go through something in order for the fruit of the spirit to be produced. It's the trouble in the hard times that push us to grow and mature in Christ. Lord Jesus, you busy running away from the problem when God want to use that problem to build you up, to shape you, mold you, to bring change in your life. So you don't ooh, stay on that cycle of dysfunction. So the stuff that you're trying to run from, God will use it to grow your faith. To grow your faith. The blessing is to know that trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Man, 
I don't know about you, but I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Ooh, man. How many times have you looked back at the problem and was glad that you didn't give up? I don't know about you, man, but I'm glad I didn't give up. I'm glad, man, that things are, are better. And I'm glad that I have a lively hope and expectation that is going to get even better than what it is right now. See, you have to be able to speak those things that are not as if they are. You have to be able to carry that dream and pursue that dream. Live intentional. Live on purpose to fulfill all of what God has called you to. Those problems and lessons that you went through made you a better person. You are a better person because of what you went through. See, you're so busy focusing on the bad side of it, not seeing the good that came out of that mess that you had to go through. And God will use you to bless that somebody else that need to hear an on-time word. Lord Jesus. So my brother, my sister, none of us can afford to waste any more time. Time is precious. Time is valuable. Time is a gift. Time is a gift. Going through that pandemic, COVID-19, a lot of good people left the planet, but you're still here. You're still here. God has blessed you with, the, with this gift called life. You are still here. Some of you might have been hit with the COVID and you have survived. Thank God for Jesus. Yes, Lord, I thank God for Jesus. Oh, man, oh, man. See, and God is good now. And he's not good sometimes. He's good all the time. I can tell you about that. I can tell you that my God is good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he's good. Not sometimes. My God is a keeper. He's often imitated. I'm here to tell you my God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Whew, God's got you. God's got you. He's got you, Pam. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. He's got you. He's got you, Maria. Lord Jesus. He's got you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Man, oh man, oh man. You know, if we really could see, know, and understand how important it is to believe God and take him fully at his word, none of us would, would waste any more precious, valuable time. Because I want you to know now, God want to do a new thing and he want to do a new thing in you. Are you ready for the new thing? Are you ready for the new thing? See, before the new thing can really come now, you have to let's just say, be open to the process of change. And as you grow in that change, as you elevate in that change, you're going to be able to expand your coast, widen your borders, and you're going to be able to say, man, man, I am so glad. Well, I can tell you today, the process of change and transformation has already begun. It has already begun in you. If you have stayed on this message to this part here, if you have listened and watched this message up to now, know that the process of change is taking place in you right now. The Bible says, don't just be a hearer of the word. See, it's something about hearing that word that's going to cause you to be a doer. It's something about hearing that word that's going to cause you to apply some keys, some principles, apply this doctrine, apply this word of God to areas of your life where you need to get up, where you need to, uh, let's just say, expand, where you need to rise up to the challenges that you might be facing today. My brother, my sister, you have to keep moving forward. Every now and then we look in that rearview mirror at what we, you know, what's behind us, what we have passed through. But I don't, I don't, I don't live in my yesterday. I live in the hope of a 
promising future. I live in the promises of God. I live in the blessings of grace, Lord Jesus. My brother, my sister, change is good. Change is good. And you're a better person today than you were yesterday. And I don't mean yesterday being the day before. Because some of us have been in some stuff for, for weeks, months, and years. But God has brought us back. God has given us another chance, a new lease on life. I would dare say he's given you a fresh start in a new beginning. Today can be a day of breakthrough. Today can be a time of celebration, rejoicing, because I'm not going back. You're not going back. You're going forward. You're going to keep reaching for the who for the stars. You're going to go beyond the clouds. You're reaching for the stars. You want to be all that you can be. You want to do all that you can do. You want to become that man, that woman of substance. Your life has meaning. Your life has meaning. And this is why change is good. Change is good. Dear God, dear Father, we are so thankful to you for your word. I thank you for these amazing men and women you have assembled to the line. I pray your choicest blessings right now to go forth. I pray that you will meet up with each and every one in need of the change, in need oof, of that something extra that only you can give. Father God, I pray and ask for the forgiveness of any and all sin. We pray, Father, that you would grant us a fresh start in a new beginning. And Lord God, we love you and we are thankful today that we're not the men and women that we used to be. But Lord God, we ask, Father God, that you will continue to enrich, continue to empower. Oh God, we're thanking you for giving us the authority, Lord God, to use that which you have blessed each and every one of us with. So Lord God, as we go forth, let us go forth with the knowing. Help us to go forth, Lord God, with an understanding that the best is yet to come. And we want to thank you today for loving on us. We want to thank you today for your grace, for your mercy. We want to thank you today. And I pray and ask you, Father God, allow your favor, allow your favor to rest upon those who have grabbed hold to this message and are taking you at your word. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. In amen. Woo, praise the Lord, saints. I, I, I hope you were able to receive that on-time word from the Lord. And I pray that you are uh, 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 going to make, let's just say, the necessary steps towards moving towards that which is greater. Know that you have been blessed by the best. And his name is Jesus. I love you. Woo but know that God loves you even more and know that he is with you right now. Oh, he's with you right now. So if you like what you heard, please give it a thumbs up. Share this video, share this message with someone that you think might need to hear this word. And then I would ask that you would subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel so you can get the all of the future uh, messages that's coming up. And I thank God for you today. I want you to know that I thank God for you today. I thank God for you, your comments. And I just want to thank you for the love that I'm receiving from each and every one of you. The love, the words of encouragement, the support. And I can only hope that I'm making a difference in your life like you're making a difference in mine. God bless you now. Have a wonderful day. A great weekend. I don't know what time of day or night you might be viewing this, but know that change is good. And guess what? You are good too. Come on back now, tomorrow, the same time, the same place, in the same station. In Jesus' name, amen 
and amen. To God be the glory.